Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another thing where I talk about things and some stuff and uh, I got a question uh, on, on Tumblr or someplace, maybe not Tumblr, maybe through my email and I can never remember anymore. I get, I get messages. Anyway though, uh, so I got a question, someone asked me if I could do a segment explaining uh, how you do stuff on YouTube and how you get big and what things happen. And there's really not a whole lot that, uh, that I could say about that. I might do a segment on it, it would be kind of short. But, uh, but YouTube is like, you don't really have a lot of control over everything, so I mean, uh, like, you kind of gain people and your own style is important. Um, but I could talk a little bit about some of the practical aspects of, of uh, doing YouTube stuff sometime later, maybe when I finish up the Sandler thing. Uh, because Sandler, Sandler is probably almost done. We don't really have a whole lot more to talk about. Uh, although it does get pretty wacky from here on out. So, right on to that. So, uh, if you watched the last episode, you might recall that we had just gone out to the desert and we'd found this tomb, and the tomb was full of gold, and all of that gold belonged to Sandler because he'd merely contracted us to find it for him, but he promised us a cut of the earnings. And this we were, you know, kind of happy about. I mean, like, the haul that they were bringing back was just enormous. And we were getting screwed. Like, this contract was, was not so great for us. Especially because we did all of the work. We did all of the legwork. We found the, we found the thing. We killed the monsters. We, uh, I think we even hauled some of the treasure. Like, Sandler didn't actually do anything short of hire us. So he had the information and just roped us into a bad contract and then, you know, pushed us on our way. So that's when we went back. Uh, we got on an airship and we discovered Sandler Island. And Sandler Island was the worst place on earth, yet everybody loved it. Like you would go there and it was just a teeming metropolis full of people, and all of them were tourists because they loved Sandler Island so much. They came out not just to look at the wonderful, glorious architecture, but also to buy things because what Sandler Island was composed of was dozens and dozens of NPCs that Sandler had made while he was GMing this game. Because he really wanted to have, like, he had his own NPCs, and every single one of them was godlike at something. There was one of them, and he was, like, the godlike uh, uh, swordsman, or whatever. But everyone was also an artisan, and so there was, like, the godlike swordsman, who was also a godlike smith. And then there was the godlike uh, firearms maker, and the godlike uh, rice cooker, and stuff like that. Like, every single one, every single one of these people could do something on a level well beyond godly. Uh, Sandler himself being one of the most proficient of any of them, uh, partic particularly in arcane engineering, because he was doing things that even, like I say, modern technology was not capable of doing. He had automated robot guards, the city could fly, like he had a whole flying city. Uh, he had an animal handler. I remember this one, this came up later, because Sandler introduced the concept of limit breaks, uh, which if you're not familiar with Final Fantasy VII, a limit break is when your your guys get bashed in the face enough times, a little bar fills up, and when it fills up large enough, you do like a big final attack, and then you know you you're done. You spent that, and you have to you have to wait until they get bashed in the face again before you can do it. And so Sandler tried to introduce that later on, and it was because none of us could fight the monsters. It just the monsters got too big, and uh, Kalen was the only one who could fight them, so things didn't scale so well. So anyway, though, but we went back to Sandler Island. And it turned out that there was this great big auction. That was what Sandler wanted to do with the stuff. He wasn't going to keep it for his island. He decided to sell all of it because there was tons and tons of money in all this like jade cobalt stuff. You know, like this is super rare, you know, alloy, alloys and polymers and things like that. So he goes out there and he, all these rich people come and they sit down and we say like, we're getting a 10% cut on each of these items. So Sandler makes us roleplay the entire auction, and he makes us do that because he wanted us to maybe come up with schemes, or he wanted us to see like the items that he had written down, and if we wanted to buy one, then he would give it to us. So we start to, you know, we start to vote on stuff, and like one thing we're saying, like Kalen's our warrior. Obviously, he leveled up a lot during this whole thing. He killed uh, some mummies, and he did some things, and he killed all these spiders. So Kalen needs a better weapon because right now, like I started the game, and we don't have any money, and so I just had like a really cheap weapon. So they were like, Kayla needs a good weapon. Let's wait for a good weapon to pop up. And so Sandler goes like, oh, well, you know, like there's there's not going to be any really like good weapons, you know, because I think that we talked to, yeah, this is when we first talked to him. We went back and we were like, can we maybe like on credit get a good weapon, like a better weapon for Kayla? And so Sandler goes, oh, yeah, you go and you talk to the swordsmith and he comes out with like this uh, this sword and you pull a lever and, and it'll snap shut on someone and that's an instant death. And we go, okay, Sandler, uh, how exactly does that work? Like, how do you sell us the instant death sword? And he's like, oh, well, it's only got a 10% chance of working. And we said, we go, 
Oh, okay, so that's worthless. Like, that'll be like one in every ten turns we manage to kill something. And we're already killing monsters faster with just the crappy, you know, cheap, ordinary sword. So what else have you got? And he goes, oh, oh, I've got this sword that, uh, that creates a fireball. And we're like, oh, oh. Well, a fireball shooting sword could be really useful. Uh, how much? How much is it? And he goes, "Oh, it's, it's so much, you know." But you can take it out on loan because you guys are going to get a bunch of money. And then he goes, uh, uh, "Although, of course, you're going to need tons of magic and really high intelligence to use it." And we're like, "Oh, that's not Kalen." So, okay, thanks for that useless uh, bit of suggestion. What else have you got? And he goes, "Oh, I've got a three-handed sword." And uh, and it's telling that I remember some of these because they were so stupid. There were more of them, but these were the stupidest ones that I could remember. He goes, "A three-handed sword." And we go, what does the three-handed sword do, Sandler? And he goes, well, it does double damage every time you hit with it, but it takes like a, a negative 10 modifier to hit or something like that. And it slows your agility way down. So everything that he had, it was offset by weaknesses that were way worse than the benefits. Every single item. And this was a master swordsman. Like, this was the top of the top. No one else on the entire planet was as good as Sandler Island's swordsmith. And we, we couldn't find a good sword. He didn't have a single sword that was of just reasonable quality. Everything was stupid horrible. So we gave up on that and we said, well, we'll see. Like there were a bunch of like mystical weapons and things like that that the mummies had, weren't there? Like maybe some of those. I mean, those lasted for generations. What if we bought one of them and sharpened it up? Do you think that that would be really good? And so, so Sandler goes, oh, you know, I don't know, but I don't think it's going to be better than the Sandler Island weapons. And we're like, okay. So we sit down and we start doing the voting and, uh, and people start voting, and they're like voting hundreds of thousands of gold. And we're just like looking at each other, and we're like, oh, 10% of that is, is, is you know, 10,000. Like, that's really good. And then someone, like, every single item was selling for that much. And so we got this medallion, and we were like, oh, how much is that going to be? Like, 6,000 gold. Like, that's a steal. And we found out it's like a stat-boosting amulet. We're like, yeah, yeah, give us that. Give us the stat-boosting amulet. And, uh, and, and so, so we bought that one. We are like, yeah, stat-boosting amulet, yay. And then, uh, and then we got to a sword, and it was like an enchanted sword. It was the one being wielded by the Mummy King, which, uh, as you recall, Cat had defeated. And so we were like, oh, that was a really good sword. That's what we need. That's just a really good sword. It's like an enchanted weapon. And Sandler goes, it might be cursed, you guys. And we go, yeah, but it was a really good weapon. And like, whatever. I mean, being cursed is not any worse than what the stupid swordsmith wants to sell us. <laughs> so like, a, cursed, a cursed sword that just does more damage is probably less hurtful to the, to the party. So we were like, oh, yeah, I'll vote for that. And so this guy just keeps voting up and up, and he's like, he's like, uh, 100,000, 200,000, uh, a million. And so we got up to like a million, and we we're like, well, okay, uh, never mind, just let him have it. Like, he really wants it. I mean, that's 100,000 gold right there for us. Just let us keep that. Let's do my mental math directly. Anyway, like, just let him, let him keep that one. We'll just, we'll skip on to the next one. It wouldn't be 100,000. But it, oh, it, it, anyway, but anyway, so yes, uh, no, we do. So yes. Uh, anyway, though, uh, 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 yeah, so we just let him keep the sword. And so we sit down, and we're like, man, we made a killing on that, even with 10%. Like, that was amazing. We sold a fountain for a million gold. Like, there was a fountain. It was a big, it was like a big blue metallic, it was a, you know, blue gold fountain or something or other. And, and somebody bought that for a million. That was very explicitly stated, like, one million gold is what it went for. So we we were doing the math and like uh, i remember one of us i i can't remember who it was it was maybe cat or rummy or someone was just doing the math and they were like we are gonna be rolling in money and so we're like sandler how much did we make and he goes wait 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 gets out the 100 sided die and we all groan we're like no sandler no you're not rolling the 100 sided die to figure out how much money we earned we sat through the whole auction and we bid on things and we have the numbers that these people bought and Sandler just glares at us, and he's like, you don't know that all those people could afford what they were buying. Some of them might have just been voting up to upset you. And we were, we were like, are you kidding? Like, are you kidding? You mean that, you mean that, like, they, that, that, that we were the highest bidders the entire time for any of the items that we couldn't achieve? Like, that sword, we bid up to, like, 800000 but the guy who bid a, a million is, like, not going to be able to pay that? So we're the only ones who actually bought anything? And he goes, yeah, pretty much. And so he starts to roll the dice. And he comes back and he's like, you each get 5,000. And we're like, the amulet costs 6,000 alone. And he's like, well, you each get 5,000. So we're like, oh, okay, great, great. Uh, well, let's not get the amulet. Let's let them know that we can't pay for that. So uh, let's throw that right out, okay? And then we, we were screwed. And so we're like, so how do we get out of here, Sandler? What do we do next? What's our next step? And he goes, well, 
Sandler doesn't have any more jobs for you. So, uh, you know, you guys, you guys are on your own, kind of. That's, that's what he tells us at first. And so we just kind of like, we sort of put it around. We were like, how much does it cost to get off the island? And he goes, no ships are getting off the island. And we go, how come no ships are getting off the island, Sandler? And he goes, because all the ships, everyone who comes here is very rich and they own their own private ships. Therefore, we don't have jets that fly out here. You don't rent a, a seat, you know, that would be silly. You wouldn't be rich enough. And then we said, oh, someone might have told us that when we came out here. And they're like, well, maybe you could hitch a ride on someone else's ship. Or, or you could talk to Sandler, who designs airships. And, and we were like, uh, uh, let's, let's go and talk to someone who will rent us a ship. And so we went around and everyone was just like, oh, commoners, no, never. I would never let commoners ride on my airship. Everyone refused us. We couldn't, we couldn't pay. We're like, how much, how much will you pay us? And we we're like, 5,000 gold. <laughs> like, how much? It's all we got. What do you want? And they're like, no, no, you know, 5,000 gold is not nearly enough to fly in my amazing, you know, charter airship. So we finally, we go down to, uh, we go down to Sandler and we're like, Sandler, we need to buy an airship. We'll pool all the money that you gave us and we'll give you that as a down payment. How much is this airship gonna, sh gonna cost us? And Sandler goes, oh, you guys are in great luck. I've just put together this amazing experimental airship. It's got like a boarding things in the front here. It's got these spikes that ram into other airships and then you can board those airships. It's great, it's just amazing. So it's very fast and he gives us the whole sales pitch. And he's got like diagrams drawn up. Like Sandler is actually just hands us these diagrams of the ship because he's drawn it out on a piece of paper. And he says, he says, so what do you guys think? And we're like, we're like, is it gonna take us out of Sandler Island? I mean, are we gonna starve here or what? And he goes, yeah, it'll take you out, but it's gonna cost you two million gold. We say, two million gold. And he goes, yeah, but Sandler will let you take it out on loan. And so we say, okay, Sandler, fine. I mean, there's no other way to advance the plot. So yeah, we go into debt to Sandler for two million gold. Uh, congratulations on your amazing GMing. So we give him two million gold and we go out and we inspect the ship and we find out that he put the engines in the ramming spikes. That was one of the first things. I mean, like he, he, he kind of drew it on the diagram, but you couldn't tell from his diagram what the ship was actually supposed to be or what it was supposed to be doing. It wasn't until our characters went out to go look at the ship that Sandler explained to us that he put the engines on the on the ramming spikes. So, what we found out later is because Sandler didn't understand the rules for arcane engineering, the first time we ever tried to ram someone, the he made us roll to see if the engines would fail, and if they he goes if they fail, you'll just crash and you'll you'll have to like uh, sail the boat on auxiliary power across the ocean, stuff like that. So that that happened later on. But anyway, though. So we got our lovely boat, and it was just, it was a total piece of crap. It turned out it was slower than like a freight boat. I mean, it was, because Sandler also didn't really look at the boat rules. And so later on, we, when we tried to chase boats, we found out that all the boats in the book were faster. And so this was a reoccurring theme. It was just like the swordsmith. He sold worse, like we could have settled for a cursed item, we would have been better off. We could have sold, we could have settled for like a cursed boat, where if you got on the boat, you became the skeleton crew and you no longer had any willpower would have been just as good as Sandler's boat. So, yes, that was good. And so we had the boat and nowhere to go. And so Sandler walks up to us and he goes, oh, by the way, did you guys check over all that stuff that we auctioned off? And we go, you know, we really didn't get a chance, did we? And Sandler goes, oh, well, you should have done that because there were some really weird etchings in one of the fountains that, that we sold. And we go, oh, really? And he goes, yeah, I think there might have been a secret compartment in it, but I didn't look. I bet that you would want to check that out. And we said, do you happen to have a list of all the people who bought items? And he goes, as a matter of fact, I do. And so he hands us the list, and it's got the guy on it who bought the fountain. And we know that he's already departed, but we know where he's departing too. So we say, okay, take our new, obviously, pirate boat and fly it out to go to go meet up with this guy. Like, just, just go find him. So Sandler, eager to get us on our first pirate mission, uh, has us fly all the way out. And, uh, and we're just fine getting on the way out there because he doesn't realize at the time that the ship really has no speed. So we catch up to this boat and he goes, okay guys, so now we're going to begin the whole boarding thing where you guys pull up alongside them and do this and do that. And, and then he looks in the book and he goes, oh, oh. And we go, what's wrong? And he goes, oh, uh, well, uh, he's, he's in the slowest kind of ship there is. And we're like, I thought he was rich. Like he's, he's flying a junk freighter. And he goes, yeah. Well, he's a, he's a uh, merchant, and he flies in a junk ship. 
And we're like, oh, okay, yeah, just like the just like the, the CEOs for FedEx fly the FedEx cargo ship. Yeah, uh, so we couldn't catch him, it turned out. Like, every single turn, he was getting further and further away. And so finally we go, all right, we have cannons, right? Like, we have front-loading cannons because Sandler decided to do this. How far of a range do the cannons have? And he goes, well, you could cover that range. And we go, all right, just fire a cannon on the ship. Like, we just want to talk, but this is it. Like, we're not catching up to them. We can't, we can't do this. We can't pull over. We can't do anything. Just fire the cannons on the ship and try to hit the engines. And Sandler goes, if you guys fire on the ship, you might hurt civilians. That'll cause you to lose, it. That'll cause you to lose experience. And so everyone kind of looks at Kaylin and they're like, you're the one with the experience. Like, just, you know, a leftover. And I'm like, all right, Kaylin will fire the cannon. And he goes, if Kalen fires the cannon, he's a lot less likely to be accurate. And I'm like, whatever, Kalen fires the cannon. Kalen takes the experience loss. So uh, Kalen fires the cannon, we hit the, we hit the ship, and it does slow down. They, they try to, uh, they don't return fire because that would just will result in us destroying them. Because we did at least have better cannons. And we board them. This is, this is when I say we ram our ship into there so that we can board them with the spikes. And it turns out he makes us roll, and he doesn't roll to crash the ship. He just goes, if you keep doing this, you might shake the engines loose. And we're like, oh, good, good, good. Great engineering, Sandler, thank you. So we get off board this ship, and uh, I, I can't remember when we did this, but at some point when we were on Sandler Island, Sandler Island, we bought a time bomb. And I can't remember why we did this, but Sandler just advertised it as a thing we could buy. And we're like, oh, a time bomb. It was a magical time bomb. It was like an elemental time bomb. It blew up uh, based off darkness. And I think I bought like two or three of them. Because I remember using them and then would have them be completely useless. Like they would just be GM'd out of existence due to some stupid fluke. And then I wouldn't erase it. I would just be like, oh, I didn't use that one. And Sandler would be like, how many of those did you buy? And I was like, a couple, a handful of them. Because it was just such a pain. It was like, oh, we set the time bomb. And he'd be like, oh, the time bomb does nothing. And he'd be like, okay. Well, then I didn't set the time bomb. And uh, yeah, so anyway. So, we find this merchant on board his stupid ship, and we approach him, and we're like, um, and we go, we'd like to look at this fountain that you have. <laughs> we go, we don't, he goes, what do you want? He's just like, we just want to look at the fountain. And he says, no. He goes, I won't let you look at the fountain. And we're like, but, but look at us. We're armed, and we're big, and we're mean, and we boarded your ship, and we shot you with a cannon. We just want to look at the fountain. And he goes, no. He goes, nope, I bought the fountain for a million gold, and you will pay me one million gold, or I won't let you look at this fountain. And, uh, and so that is when I laid down my, my magical time bomb, and I just turned it on. And I'm just like, I'm just, I'm just, I was like, we just want to look at the fountain. Uh, I'll turn off the time bomb if you let me look at the fountain. And he just, he just like very adamantly goes, nope, nope. And so Sandler, out of character, keeps going like, if you kill these people, you'll lose all your experience. If you kill these people, you'll lose all your experience. And it was one of those things that was like, this guy on the boat was bluffing with Sandler's knowledge that if we killed him, we would lose our experience. So he was just he was just totally certain that we would not harm him. And so finally, like we get down to the like the five second mark, and I just turn off the time bomb, and then kill the merchant, and I take the experience hit. I'm just like whatever, Sandler, just whatever. I have killed this man. Like let him be dead. I don't care. I don't care who he is, but I am so glad that we killed him. So. We have a look at the map that is inside this fountain. That's what we find in the fountain. We look at it, we find the secret compartment. There is a map, and it is a star chart. Another star chart. And Sandler expects us to do the same thing with the star chart as before, and, and we, we eventually talk him out of it. We're like, no. They're like, we can't see the constellations. Sandler, we don't know what you think you have drawn into this star chart, but we cannot make this crap out. And what it turns out is it's a map of several different temples and each temple is dedicated to a specific god. Don't ask me how we figured that out, but somehow we did. So these temples are all dedicated to a god, and we don't know what's on them, but we think that maybe if we loot these other temples, we might be able to make enough money, and we might be able to sell it all ourselves that we could pay back Sandler. Although, of course, that goes down the drain because Sandler uh, ripped us off later on, but that'll be for later. So uh, I will catch you guys then.